moving on. Um, next, uh, our President of the United States, Joe Biden. <sighs> Joe Biden. It's hard because when I've I've followed Joe Biden for a number of years, even before he was Obama's vice president, Joe Biden is a gaffe machine. Barna, I mean, anybody who followed him in this last presidential election cycle knows that. But anybody who followed him in the last two presidential election cycles in you know, 2008, 2012, if you followed those, you know he's a gaffe machine. And if you followed him before that, if you go back and just look at some of the things he said, he's he's terrible. I mean, he should not be speaking for this country. I it's it's awful. I have no idea how he was able to get 80 million votes. I have no idea. I have yeah, no idea at all. You know, it's uh you know, there's I'm I'm sure there's some way he got 80 million votes, the most of any president in history. I mean, it, it looks to me that you know Obama, Obama's not the one who got all those votes. Joe Biden, man, Obama picked a great vice president because he brings the votes. I mean, that's how that works. But if you watched any part, if you got any bit of Joe Biden's CNN town hall that he did, this guy is... He, he's China's puppet. It, without a doubt now, he is a puppet of the Chinese Communist Party. It, it's, it's, it's done. He's over. He's, he is China's puppet. We, sp- we spent the last four years talking about how Donald Trump was a puppet of Russia. And he wasn't. We had a whole investigation into that. We found out, no, that's not true. He was not a puppet of Russia. We now know that Joe Biden is a puppet of the Chinese government. And let me tell you why. (laughs) So, Joe Biden went on national television and stated... When, when questioned about the genocide that is going on in China with the uh, Uyghur Muslims. Now, let me put this into perspective. You haven't heard about this. This is literally a modern Nazi Germany is what's going on in China. You have a religious and ethnic minority in China, the Uyghur Muslims. They are being rounded up put on trains and sent to literal concentration camps where they are being beaten, raped, forcibly sterilized, murdered. And that that is happening. So without a doubt, that is happening. We know that is happening. That is a genocide going on right now. Right now, we know of two countries that have literal concentration camps in their borders, within their borders, and that are being operated by those governments. One of them is China, and I just told you what's going on. And the other one is North Korea, which is a Chinese puppet state, which only exists because of China, China's support. So China's response for the only... Con- China is responsible for the only concentration camps in this entire world that we know of specifically. And Joe Biden dismissed the genocide as just different cultural norms. China has different, you know, has a cultural norms that are different and the leaders of those of that country need to respond to those cultural uh, uh, demands. I didn't. Uh, I did not know that genocide was a cultural norm for any civilization, for any country. I mean, I know there's some countries that genocide has happened, but I didn't know that was a cultural norm. And if it is a cultural norm, isn't that a part of a culture that maybe shouldn't exist anymore? I mean, it became a cultural norm in Germany 
in the 30s and 40s, and we made sure to wipe that out. Should that be a cultural norm that we stand by and allow? Well, according to the UN Charter, no. We, if there's a genocide, we're supposed to go and stop it. Unfortunately, it's happening in China. The UN doesn't have the balls, and our president of the United States is owned by China. So anybody with any gumption, anybody who had, if they had the will, could actually prevent this from happening. There's, you know, they, ha- they don't have it. They don't have the, the strength or the will to, to stop this. So that whole, the whole thing about how we don't want to, you know, this will never happen again. We'll never again. The whole never again thing that came out of World War II. Well, we now know that was a joke. That was a lie. Not only is it happening again, it's going to keep happening because no one has the actual balls to stand up to China. Well, one man had the balls to step up to China, and uh, we got rid of him because he tweeted some mean stuff sometimes. And every once in a while, he said you know, the, the, the press was, was fake. So the media was fake news. So, yeah, I mean, what is that? I mean, I mean, it, it's obvious, you know, we got to get rid of that guy because that guy is a threat to democracy. But the current president who won't stand up to a genocidal regime... That guy's perfectly fine. So that's where we are with our current president. This guy's been in office for less than a month. And he has killed our energy independence. He has killed thousands of jobs. He is outwardly saying he's going to ban guns, ban certain types of guns, which is and he's saying he'll do it by executive order. So that's another campaign promise violated that he said, oh, we're going to do an act of Congress. Well, Congress is not going to get anything passed on that level. And he said he may use executive action. So he's going to just run roughshod right over the Second Amendment. And on foreign policy, a subject that has been clear, Joe Biden has been wrong on almost every single foreign policy decision in his political career completely wrong now i will give him a little bit of slack i was wrong on the iraq war too so (laughs) i'll cut him some slack on that because i thought we should have invaded iraq i stuck with that belief i kind of did an about face on that after about 10 years i'm thinking why are we still there in iraq i was like i kind of understood when we went there we did have evidence from many different countries uh, intelligence services saying no they have the wmd um they they have the desire to fund terrorism and if they have these weapons you know it, it'll be much more difficult to to really control them and keep them from you know sponsoring sponsoring any kind of terrorism and potentially giving a terrorist any kind of chemical or biological or nuclear weapons we can't have them having those so and especially right after 9-11, we're talking, this was a year and a half after 9-11. I get it. I get the whole, like, we should have gone in. After about 10 years, though, and especially after, when, when, when George W. Bush left office, Iraq was essentially won. That, that war was, was effectively won. Even, I believe even Barack Obama said it during the, the, the 2008 campaign. Iraq is effectively won. That's why we need to get out of Iraq as soon as possible. He was saying that during uh, the 2008 campaign. So after you know, after a, it got to be about the 10-year anniversary for Iraq, I started thinking to myself, look, it's been 10 years. We didn't really spend this much time re- and effort rebuilding Japan after World War II. We didn't really spend this much. I mean, we did a little bit in Germany because of the Soviet threat right there on the border. It was less so in Japan. Uh, we didn't have, uh, we didn't divide up Japan the way we divided up Germany after World War II. So I, I kind of get it. With, but why are we still there rebuilding something that really sh- by now should have been taken over by the Iraqi government and the Iraqis themselves? So. 
I started thinking, okay, it's it's time to really pull back. It's time to really pull back. And once ISIS came around, I said, okay, well, we probably need to keep a presence there <laughs> because you know this is our mess. We we screwed this up. We need to eliminate them. So I get it. I've been wrong on some of these situations too. But he's the president of the United States now. He's been wrong for 40 years. He's been wrong on everything for 40 years. And now he's he's basically got the backs of a modern day Nazi Germany. He's he's Neville Chamberlain. And for some historical context, Neville Chamberlain was the prime minister of Britain when Hitler decided to invade Austria. And Neville Chamberlain is the one who appeased Hitler. Now, there's a certain level of appeasement. I mean, you know, when you put it into into the historical context, you can kind of understand a little bit at the time for Neville, Neville Chamberlain. But the idea that we are in the idea that our president is in the same position as uh, towards China and their leadership and their Communist Party, as Neville Chamberlain was in a position against Hitler and Nazi Germany, is ridiculous. The idea that we need to be like just okay, it's like okay, we'll just do it over there. It's it's fine. That is absolutely ridiculous. Our president. Just being okay with genocide because it's on the other side of the world, it, it's, it's appalling. And that, that was just the worst thing he said during that town hall. He blatantly lied about vaccines, about the COVID vaccine, how we didn't have any before he took office, which is ridiculous because both him and Kamala Harris were vaccinated before they took office. Uh, with both doses, they, um, you know, we were doing the day he got inaugurated, 1 million people got a dose of the vaccine. And we were doing anywhere between 750,000 and a million doses for like the two or three weeks before that. So the idea that he didn't have any vaccine before he got in office is absolute bullshit. Now, I will say this, at this point, and if you followed him for the last year and a half, do you really think Joe Biden knows he's lying? I mean, I don't think he knows how full of shit he is anymore. I think, I think when he talks, he think he is actually, he actually believes this bullshit. My problem is though, is that this is a blatant lie. Now remember, Donald Trump, when he lied about how big his inauguration crowd was, that was the head the, the news story. That was the news story, the the headline for the next week after the inauguration. And his press secretary at the time just kept getting hammered and hammered. Well, it wasn't really that much. That wasn't really that much. You guys lied about that. We're talking about lying about a crowd size at an inauguration. Joe Biden just lied to everybody in the country about how many vaccines and the availability of, vac- of vaccines for COVID-19. He just lied. And there's not a fucking peep from anybody in the news media. Keep that in mind. If people start saying that you, oh yeah, the media, they're, they're the ones that are going to tell us the truth. They are not. Never. Trust the news media. And I'll tell you right now, you cannot trust CNN. You cannot trust MSNBC. You cannot trust Fox News. There are very few news sources you can trust. And if you are reading an article, it doesn't matter which news article you are reading. If it is citing anonymous sources, that's it's probably bullshit. Um, it's kind of like when you hear a reporter at a conversation, well, some say that you're, that you're doing this because of this sinister reason. What they mean is I think you're a piece of shit and I need you to tell me why you're not a piece of shit. 
that's not i mean that's nobody actually believes what these reporters think and you, you really cannot trust certain outlets uh you definitely can't trust the new york times uh especially after you know basically the 1619 project whoever's the head of that they're basically the, the de facto editors now um you definitely can't trust the washington post they're they're awful and terrible they're they're the worst newspaper in the country so the uh the reality is is that right now you can't trust the media because right now they're reporting on on biden playing mario kart with his granddaughters which is cool okay you know the president gets to play mario kart with his granddaughters awesome um they're reporting on how he likes to have a fire in the in the oval office and he'll he'll even put a log on the fire himself from time to time to keep it going. Great. Why did he lie to the American people on national television about COVID-19 vaccines? Why is he referring to genocide in China as a, a different cultural norm? The media is not holding Biden accountable and it's pretty sickening. And I, I, the fact, I mean, the fact that you have Disney, which owns ABC and ABC News, you need to look no further. Remember, they canceled, or they, yeah, they canceled, but they got rid of Gina Carano because Gina Carano said, don't make your neighbors out to be the enemy because of their political beliefs, which is a nonpartisan statement. I mean, it's, it's fine. But they're filming movies in China where genocide is happening. ABC News knew about Jeffrey Epstein, who did not kill himself. ABC News knew years before Epstein did not kill himself that he was running a, a, a pedophile ring. And they covered that up. So... You cannot trust the media at all. You need to be very selective in who you can trust as far as a news source. I'll tell you right now, I'll get a lot of my, my middle-of-the-road stuff from The Hill, even though The, the Hill does have a bit of a, a, a liberal slant to it. Um, they do have some some good, more, I don't want to say right-leaning, but more fair journalists. Um, my right-wing news comes almost exclusively from uh, The Daily Wire. Uh, my left wing news. I mean, I can. There's left wing Twitter. I can get my my far far left stuff from them. Uh, again, the Hill is kind of a left wing source, and um, I'll get my commentary mostly from Tim Pool, who was a little bit on the the middle ground and stuff. So you need to be very selective in who you are getting your news from, and just make sure it's uh, they just make sure they bring receipts. Yeah, that's really about it. 